Hey guitar fam and friends, it's Nate Savage here again with another famous guitar solo video for you. This time we're taking a look at the Eagles tune, Take It Easy, the solo from that song. And of course we have the jam track and the tab available for you on guitarfam.com. So go there if you haven't created your complimentary account, do that. There's loads of free courses and the first module of all of our premium courses is available for you too. And every Guitar Fam member gets one personal private one-on-one -on -one complimentary lesson with me. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, you can go to the site and schedule that there on the site too. So let's get into this. Uh, just so you know, if you're, cause some people like uh, to know what tone that I use for this to try to mimic uh, the tone that uh, Joe Walsh is getting on there. Yeah, I'll put a screenshot of it up. I'm just using Helix Native or my HX Stomp, you know, during the lesson. And it's uh, a Princeton model. Here's the EQ and the settings for it, but all, it's, all it is is a little bit of a compressor before the Princeton with the stock cab and the amp, and then a uh, just a regular spring reverb after that, and then a room reverb to give it a little ambience. So that's all I'm using for this. Okay, so there's a lot of bending and sliding in this solo, so get ready for a challenge if uh, those are things you haven't worked on yet, but it's a good solo to learn. It's also great uh, to work on for switching pentatonic scales and over, um, you know, relatively simple chord progressions, but it does it pretty quickly. Um, so it's a really good way. I'll put up the pentatonic scales that we're changing to as the chord progression goes by. And I'll put uh, the chords on over the solo too, so you know exactly what chords are played over. So it starts out over a G chord, okay? And then the first move is on the and of four before the first measure of what would be really the solo. You go, you go on two with your middle finger, and slide up to four on the G string. And we're over a G chord, so the really the major pentatonic scale we're using is this one. I'm thinking about this E major shape for a G chord. So I'll go, and then my index finger comes up here and grabs the rest of this E chord, or E shaped chord, that's a G chord on top with my index finger on the third fret of the G and, uh, sorry, the B and high E string. So, hit both of those twice, back to four with your middle finger on the G string, and then three on the B and high E strings again. And then do it again. And as soon as you do it that second time for this time around, hammer on to the fifth fret of that B string with your third finger and take that off hit just three of the B and G strings again. So, so far. And we're still playing over a G chord. And then from there you come down to these two notes, which are just out of the G triad right here. First finger on, finger on the third fret of the B, middle finger on the fourth fret of the G string. And then you slide down to where you're, keep that same shape, your first and second fingers are on the first fret of the B, second fret of the G string, and then open. So, so far, one, two, three, and four. After those two open strings, what you do is use your index finger and middle finger, same kind of shape, to slide up on the G and B strings to four on the G string and three on the B string. And you'll see that it's on the beat, it's on beat one of that measure. But there's two slashes in front of it. That means to just slide into those two notes on the beat. So one, and then hit them again. And then we're still playing over G chord, and here's where it changes. We go to a D chord really quickly. And that's the lick for that. That's the second half of uh, measure three there. And all it is is back to a second fret with the same shape. Second fret of the G string, first fret of the B string. Hit it once, let off with your middle finger to hit an open G string. Put your second finger back down, and then off again with your middle finger. You know, really, it, it looks like a D7 chord. So. So. That's what we're playing over. And then. 
The next measure goes to a C chord. And the way you can tell, or the, what, the shape that I'm thinking about is just an open C. So after this, I have open D, hammer on to the second fret of the D, and then my index finger is really staying here from that last little lick we did, and then the open G and the B first fret. And so that's really, that's really hinting at this C chord that we're playing over. So G chord, D chord, C chord. So we play that whole uh, first uh, system for you up to this point. From there, you're gonna you're getting ready to pick up uh, back into a G chord. So I play open G, second fret of the G string, and then slide up to the fourth fret, and I'm back in this kind of G major pentatonic G major uh, shape that uses E shape that using this planar G chord, right? So open, slide from two to four, and I'm back in the shape. Then my index finger is down here on the third fret of the B string back to this note I'm holding down on the fourth fret with my second finger. Then I'll lift up, come back, second fret of the G, open G. So I'm really mixing this chord shape and my open G. And then we move to a D chord and we slide all the way up here to the 11th fret of the G string and then the 10th fret of the B string back to the 11th fret. And all we're doing is moving, using the same shape, this E shape only over a D. So we have to slide. And then we slide down to the 9th fret on the beat and then the 7th fret of that same G string. So. G chord, here comes a D, and then really if you want to think about it, we slide down, go from this D chord to this D chord, and then the next little move is to slide up from 8 to 9 on the G string, uh, and we're over a C chord now, Duh. and it's this C chord the one that uses the E shape. So visualize that as you do this, and we're just gonna use this kind of major pentatonic skill. I'll have that up on the screen for you, so. And then eight of the B string, back to nine of the G string. And this is where it moves back to a G chord. Du, 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 du. And then when you go to the 10th fret of the B string, you bend up a full step. And really I'm thinking, this G chord, the C shaped G chord, with this major pentatonic skill. But it's on the 10th fret, bend that up a whole step, leave it bent up, hit it three more times, and then hit it again, and let it down, and then hit the 8th fret of the B string. And I'll play that whole thing for you from this part. And that's the end of measure four going into measure five. And slide up to a D chord using the E shape. And then it slides down to a D chord using the G shape. And then we move to a C chord using the E shape. Then the bendy part over the G. From there, you use your third finger, or at least I do, to slide from a 10 to a 12 on the B string. And this is kind of over an E minor chord. So E minor, so 10 to 12 with your third finger. And then you flatten out your third finger to play the 12th fret of the B and high E strings twice. Once you slide up, you just flatten your third finger out to grab the 12th fret of the B and high E strings and hit that twice. And then you can come back here with that same finger to the 10th fret, play that, both strings at the same time, B and high E, then slide up to the 12th fret, hit the 12th fret again, 
and then come back down to the 10th fret, hit that and slide up again to the 12th. Then back to the 10th. Now I don't always play that last little phrase like that. Sometimes I do it a little bit differently. Let me play it for you in context so you can get an idea for the rhythm for it. So. I think on the recording he slides. That's what it sounds like to me, but sometimes I go hammer and then slide on the second one. So it's up to you whichever way you want to do it. Anyway, after you play that little bit, I like to have end up on that last uh, fret 10 with my third finger because it sets me up to play this next little part. And it's just the ninth fret of the G string with my third finger and my pinky on the 10th fret of the B string. You hold the pinky down on the 10th fret, don't move it, and then bend up with all three of these fingers on the ninth fret. Nice little steel guitar bend. And then hit it again and let it back down and then go to the seventh fret. So that like, that seventh fret of the G and then ninth fret of the D string. So, and from there, I reach back with my middle finger on the seventh fret and go from seven to nine. And by the way, this is, and this is over the D chord that, and we're using just this major pentatonic right here. So, and then you go D chord. And then it goes to a C chord right here. And it's using this E shape. So seven to nine, eight on the B string, 10 on the B string, eight on the B string, and then after that, it goes to um, a G chord. So let me go from that slidey bit for you. So I'm thinking over an E minor. And I'm thinking this E minor pentatonic scale, right? So. Then it goes to a D. So I'm thinking this D major pentatonic. And then. C major. From there, it goes to a G chord, and I'm going back to, I just see a G right there, so I'm thinking G major pentatonic right here. And all I'm doing is taking the 10th fret and bending it up a whole step. And then my pinky grabs the 10th fret of the high E string. So you have to hold that bend up. Play the high E string on the 10th fret, and then come back and bend it up again. 10th fret of the B string, hit it again while it's up, let it down, then the 8th fret of the B string, then the 9th fret of the G string, so, and that's all over a G chord. So let me play that whole phrase for me. Again, I'll start from the slidey bit, so. And from here you go to an A minor chord and you just go to an eight to a 10 really quick hammer on on the B string, then seven to eight on the high E string, back to seven, 10. So that over the A minor chord. And all I'm thinking about is this A minor pentatonic skill. And then you go to back here. That's the lick. And then it's over a C chord. And what I'm thinking about is this C major pentatonic scale, right? And the one over that uses the G shape. And the lick is this right here. Third finger goes on the seventh fret of the G string, pinky on the eighth fret of the B string. Hold that B string down, don't let it move, and push up on the seventh fret with all three fingers. Full step bend, hit them both at the same time. And then eighth fret that you're already holding down, let the seventh fret back down, bend it up again a whole step. And then hit it again, leave it bent up, and let it fall back down really quick. And then five, 
on the G string, 7 on the D string, back to 5 on the G string, 7 on the D string. And the phrasing there is a little weird, so it's pretty quick on the lead. Duh. And I would even put a, a pull off on there from 5 to 7. And that's all over a C major chord too. And then from there, you have an E minor chord and all we're gonna do is play. You put your third finger on the 10th fret of the B string, pinky on the 10th fret of the high E string, hold that pinky note down on the 10th fret without moving it and use all three fingers to bend up the 10th fret of the B. Then leave it bent up, hit it three more times, let it back down the next time you hit it. So, and that's over an E minor chord. The next measure stays over an E minor chord for a little bit. For the next little, the in the E minor I'm thinking about when I do this. It's this A minor shape, so. Bend up, leave it three more times. Hit it again, bend it back down. 8th fret of the B string, and then it moves to a D chord. And the last little lick here is, this is a tough part. You have to move all the way up here very quickly. Pinky on the 14th fret of the high E, all three fingers on the 13th fret of the B string, and do a full step bend on the B string while holding that uh, 14th fret down, not moving with your pinky. And what he does on here, I'm not sure if he overdubs it or not, but what he does, he has a bend where it sounds like that G string is in there too. But the, I can't even do it. Like if I try to do it when I'm playing, it never sounds right. What I have to do is go grab both of them. And then it kind of sounds right, you know, over it. There you go, it's pretty cool. I think it's an overdub on the um, recording, but I could be wrong. But let me play that last little phrase from all the slidey bits again for you just so you can get an idea of the rhythm for it, so. And the bends. Okay, that's it for this solo. If you have any questions, about this particular solo or you know lead guitar in general, feel free to leave a comment below or email us support at guitarfam.com and don't forget to go to guitarfam.com and create your complimentary account. We'd love to see you there.